All right, hello everybody. Uh, today we are going to be painting this little fawn in acrylic. So uh, in the chat and description, you will find the link to the original reference image, which I did crop just a little bit. Uh, I, you know, the background, which I'll discuss in a minute, I just felt like I didn't want so much of it. So I cropped it a little bit more of a squarish view. And then um, I did just a little sketch. I didn't do anything with the background. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then you'll notice I left out like the little spots too, which I'll, I'll be painting those in. Uh, but yeah, the background, I just wasn't sure on. Um, I'll show you this one. This is one I had done a while back. And I just, I like the this brighter or lighter, I guess it's not super bright, but lighter blue versus the dark background of this reference. But you know, the dark is kind of nice too. So I'll see. I'm not exactly sure where I want to go with it. I might start painting the fawn itself first and then just kind of see with the background and the, the tree or branches I figure could easily be added in if I wanted them to be. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. This is just some watercolor paper, just cold press watercolor paper. Honestly, it's student grade. It's not anything too fancy. And then um, this is just some washi tape just for my edges. I like to sometimes keep them nice and clean. You know, that feeling of when you pull them off and reveal that crisp edge is kind of nice. And I like the washi tape because it uh, typically doesn't rip my, rip my paper. It's not perfect, but uh, yeah. So as far as colors go, what I have here, I'm trying some of these Arteza Premium uh, acrylic paints. I had to replenish some and I decided to give these a go. So I've got some Burnt Umber, Mars Black, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Titanium White, and then uh, Liquitex Basics. I have this light pink, which you could also make yourself a light pink with like a a red and some white together. Honestly, mostly white with a little red will get you a light pink. But I have this uh, already, so I'm going to use this one. And then I did pull this uh, light blue permanent just in case I do go lighter with that background. I've got it set to the side here. We'll see if I end up using it. So that's what I have for my color palette. Now, if you don't have all of these, you can certainly mix your own browns just with the primary colors. Uh, you know, and you could also use like a Van Dyke brown instead of a burnt umber. Or if you don't have a burnt sienna, add some red into your, you know, burnt umber, more neutral brown. So, you know, you can kind of use your own color palette as you see fit. So as far as a wash goes, I think I want to keep it relatively neutral. And I'm going to go with this yellow ochre. Uh, and again, I set a wash to give myself a middle value, so I'm not painting on white. That way, if I have colors uh, or brush strokes overlapping, but the background's poking through, it's not white, it's a tone. I like that. And then the other reason I like doing a wash is because it sets a ground for me to start to build my paint on. Acrylic paint works really well when it's layered. So that's that's where I'm going with it. You don't have to add a wash if you don't want to. You could certainly uh, add a ground ahead of time and then sketch on a more solid ground. You know, there's options. And then some folks like to add like a, a gloss or a matte medium instead of water just to protect the binder of the paint uh, so it doesn't break down. Uh, but usually with a higher quality paint, it can uh, hold a little water and you can water it down some. So what I do is I've got this uh, flat brush here. It's kind of like a little utility brush. And I just mix some water in with that acrylic paint. And this is just yellow ochre. And then I always start where my sketch is not, just so I can make sure it is um, transparent and I don't take out my sketch because that's a shame when that happens. So, and could you set a wash and then sketch on top? You know, you can. Again, there's multiple approaches of how to do things. And, you know, the more you paint and you're just going to figure out what works for you and what you like best. So I don't mind brush strokes here. Um, I do try to get it relatively even, but a little bit of a Variation is fine. Okay, 
and just kind of keep mixing a little water in there. And you can see through. And you can pick any color you want. You know, honestly, I've done bright colors before because I want, you know, a bright color to kind of pop through. Or you could choose it warm colors, cool colors. You know, it's so whatever you want. So, and honestly, I will tell you, this appears on my camera just a little bit brighter than it actually is in person for me. So, um, camera kind of does that. And then, of course, when the paint is wet with my lights, too, you get a little bit of reflection. So, as that dries, it might settle down a little bit. But it just, yeah, it's a little bit brighter on the screen. To me, it's just a little bit uh, a duller. But I like that. I think that will be nice for... Uh, the deer. So again, I'm going to come back to the background. Now, I sometimes I do paint my backgrounds first and then my subject. Sometimes I go subject, background. Honestly, it just really is dependent on the painting. And uh, sometimes I like to be, you know, influenced choosing colors based on the wash just to sort of, um, I don't know, compliment it if you want to say that. So uh, as far as brushes go, I kind of stick to some basic like rounds and flat brushes but you can use any brushes you want um, I just kind of pull out a little variety here to kind of pick from and then what I'm going to do to get my palette set up is I'm going to add these other colors here so I've got this burnt sienna this is that raw umber this is just palette paper that I'm using by the way and uh, I'll just scooch that to the side a minute. And I, I like palette paper uh, for acrylic paints uh, just because the cleanup, you know, I don't like to send a ton of acrylic paint down the drain. So that's kind of a nice way to do it. Got a little bit of Mars Black, Titanium White, and then I already got my little ochre. can still use some of that. And then over here, I'm going to add just a little touch a light pink. I don't need a ton of that. So I'll just put a little bit on my palette for now. I kind of like to put my colors, you know, on the edge or top sides, and then I'll start to mix kind of inward. Um, and then my approach uh, with painting typically is I like to think about uh, kind of, uh, put it this way, like back to front or bigger areas to smaller areas, meaning I like to finish with my details rather than starting with them. So like, that's why I didn't even put the little uh, um, dots, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for, um, um, on the um, fawn there, just because I didn't, I didn't wanna start with that. I didn't wanna have to work around it. I wanna be able to kind of paint Almost if you could imagine there, they weren't there, the spots weren't there, um, what would that look like underneath? And then we can bring the spots on top. Uh, acrylic paint is opaque. It's meant to be layered. So it works that way. I don't have to go around necessarily. I can build up and layer on top. So that's kind of my approach and my plan there. And I'm just going to start. This is a number eight round brush. This is one of the etcher brushes. These are really nice. I like these a lot. I kind of use them for... Um, all my paints really. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just pull down a little bit of this burnt umber and I'm going to kind of look at the brown areas of the fawn and where it's darker first. So I'm just going to pull a little bit of that with a little bit of black to darken. You can also darken brown with like an ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, or kind of an equivalent darker blue and brown can work together. But I'm gonna use black to darken. And then what I'm gonna do is just start to look for areas on the fawn where I see this kind of color. And when I'm using a reference, by the way, I my goal isn't to copy it or to be bound to it or to make sure it looks identical. It's some basic information so I can get the structure. I like this shape. I wanted to sketch from the reference. But, you know, the painting is mine. I'm going to put my own spin into it. So what I kind of do is while the paint is wet, I like to kind of blend a little color variation in there. And that's the wet on wet technique. So when colors are wet, they'll blend and merge together. 
And if you want colors to sit more on top, you want things to dry. So I'm kind of a little bit of a chaotic painter. I like to hop around. Um, I don't really think too much about it. I just kind of go and I'm kind of just looking for different areas where I see these similar darks happening. And I'm trying to um, block in by value by and by color a little bit there. And so I'll build lighter values on top and we'll start to see um, some more dimension take place. And I'm not necessarily, you know, making my paint super flat. I'm leaving a little bit of brush stroke there, just kind of uh, allowing my brush strokes to kind of overlap a little bit. I don't need to necessarily, um, I'll just kind of show you over here because I'll cut this off anyway. But I'm, I'm lifting like this as I'm painting because I want to see a little bit of stroke rather than like filling it in super solid or flat. So this way, when I kind of build up and layer, you know, I'm trying to mimic fur, right? So I want to think about that texture a little bit. So that's something that I'm, I'm thinking about as I'm painting, not flat strokes, but you could paint it that way if you want. It just look a little bit more illustrative. And I just want to capture a little bit more texture. So again, different styles, but just to kind of explain what I'm doing here. So that's kind of why I'm holding the brush the way I am, a little bit more like a pencil. You know, I could pull it back a little bit, but this is a fairly small painting. So usually for a smaller painting, I tend to grip the brush just a little bit closer, me personally. But you can try try different things. And you can try different brushes. You know, that's that's the point is exploration and, and trying trying different things. So I'm just kind of mixing some variation of these browns here. And eventually I'll get some lighter values in there too. Again, it might appear dark right now, but again these lighter values can start to sit on top. That's the nice thing with acrylic is you can work dark to light, light to dark. Uh, you just sometimes have to build layers. So again, just bring some of these values. Again, because I'm painting this way, kind of lifting my brush up as I'm going, this is why I like that wash underneath. Because it, as it pokes through, again, it sets that tone. Uh, it's not white popping through there. Oh, thank you, Sassy. I appreciate that. I'm glad you're learning so much. And as always, you know, if there's any questions that pop up, feel free to pop them in the chat. Or, you know, if you are watching it later, feel free to uh, leave comments and I can uh, do my best to come back and answer questions. Again, I'm just kind of hunting for these shadows or dark areas. And Again, my, my brown doesn't have to be one flat brown, right? I can mix different variations because think about fur. There's light fur, dark fur, all these different values as it sits on top or is layered. It's going to look different. And as I start to uh, work with some lighter values too, I'll actually change my brush a little bit too and start to use a little bit of a um, thinner brush to get some of you know, a little bit more of the different values in there. And then there's some area like here in the fur where there's a lot of white too, but you see bits of kind of brown poking through. So that's kind of where I think about stuff in the back or stuff underneath. I kind of want to paint a little bit of that first, but then I will layer some more white on top. So sometimes you have to think about that. Um, it's not always obvious, like what would something if you took something away, what would it look like? Like in this case, the spots. I'm sort of imagining uh, the deer without the spots at the start. I'm gonna put a little bit of white into this. And this is kind of actually where that paint can be nice too. Just in addition, it can uh, help not make, the white sometimes flattens out colors. So sometimes just bringing in this little bit of pink, which it, again, if you don't have pink, you could do a touch of red. And that's kind of help, helping me get a little bit of these lighter values. So I'm gonna bring just a little bit in. Again, as these uh, paint is still wet, 
uh, I can mix a little bit and some blends will start to happen. Whereas remember if colors are dry, they will uh, layer more. Let me get a little bit of, a little bit more of that burnt sienna. That burnt sienna has just kind of a nice warm to it. And you know, I actually, I think I'm gonna do a bit of orange. Now, if you don't have orange, you could just do a yellow and red combo, but I, uh, I have orange in a tube, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. And I'm gonna add just a bit of orange into my palette. I don't want much. I just want to warm this just a little bit more. It's just a little bit more orangey um, and less of the brown. So I'm just going to bring a little orange into that to get a little bit more of that. And again, if you don't have an orange, you can just do some, some yellow and red. And again, just mixing a few different variants here. And you know, you might, I'll be honest, I don't mix with palette knives very much. I like to mix with brushes just because ugh, I'm lazy sometimes. But your brushes sometimes do get full of paint. And when you bring that back, you might put more on than you're wanting to. So you can always, this is why I like paper towel. I'll come blot some off. Um, just being aware of how much paint is on your brush is, is important. There we go. I'll bring a little bit of some lighter values in here. And it's not that I'm done with the dark, but I'll get to a point where I like to see a little bit of, um, a little bit of a variation there. Just helps me uh, visualize a little bit better when I start to see some contrast. You know, I'm still not totally satisfied with this color, which, you know, happens from time to time. So I'm going to just kind of revisit this a minute. I also have a little bit of this crimson red. Could do any kind of red, really. But this is uh, one of those Arteza ones. So I'm just going to try this a little bit. I'm just going to do a little experiment with some color here. Again, you know, sometimes you do this, you try to figure out uh, what you want it to look like. So I'm just cleaning my brush off. And I wanna clean that really good with some water, blot with paper towel. So I always wanna make sure, you know, I get my uh, brush blotted too. Lots of water can kind of hide and get in your mixture. So I just wanna, I wasn't quite satisfied with the amount of orangey-ness. I think I just kind of had too much brown in there. So I'm going to just revisit this. And I think I want to bring... I think that got a little too pink for me. Let me grab some white. Here. Then let me grab just a bit of the brown. I got a little brown mixture over here. Put that in half of it. Okay, and then I'm gonna try one without any of the red in there. Might be a little too picky right now, but. To get a little water in here too. Okay, I'm gonna try a little bit of this. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to kind of keep popping around and blocking in. And as I'm blocking in, my goal isn't to uh, 
necessarily capture all of the detail at this point. It's just to kind of figure out the value structure. Where is it light? Where is it dark? And then I can start to lay down some texture on top of that. A bit of this yellow oxide with some white and see a little orange. Yeah, a little yellow oxide and white and get a little bit of that little lighter value in here. And I will be bringing some white in here too. And some of this yellow oxide isn't appearing super contrasted just because I used yellow oxide as my wash. So as I start to lay in a background, that can start to come together too. So, you know, backgrounds are nice because we can think about something that's contrasting. And I'm not going to go crazy with the background, but you know, we definitely want something together. You know, so some of these little combos, I'll, I'll kind of mix them together. And, you know, the beauty of acrylic paint is if you start to lay down color and you're just not liking it, you can always let things dry. And you can uh, layer more color on top and totally cover it up. And we'll get detailed, more details with the face too, and I'll talk about all that. All right, I'm gonna wash my brush off and start to block in a little bit of the white. And then I, I still wanna play with the color here. I'm still not totally satisfied with what I got going on. So I'm gonna look at that a little bit closer in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and block some of this uh, white. And white, you know, is not, is usually not pure white. In some spots it is, but there's also, some areas uh, where it reads is more gray. So I'm kind of mixing myself up a little bit of gray, a couple different ranges there. And then we're gonna start to kind of block in some of those areas where we're seeing some white here. And again, I'm going for a little bit, you know, of a painterly style, so I don't want things to be super blended. I want things to be a little bit more layered. But then this is where I'll start to kind of build, you know, this white on top and kind of let areas poke through a little bit by kind of overlapping my brush strokes, but kind of spacing them out at the same time. And I will try to use, I'm still trying to use a little bit of a bigger brush for some of these areas, but I will start using a smaller brush soon too, because that's how you get all those finer lines and it all starts to come together. So anywhere where you're seeing some of this white. Again, I hop back and forth between colors too. And I go back to some of these darks as well. The eyes always look a little creepy too until you get them painted in. We'll do that soon too.
And remember, it's a building process and you're layering and building things. And I think sometimes it's nice to, you know, take little pictures of your progress just so you can reflect after the fact. Um, I think it goes to show how much goes into something and how it changes over the course of a painting too. This painting to me isn't, you know, perfect step-by-step -step process. It's a process of problem solving and sometimes changing your mind and figuring things out as you go. And you learn with every painting that you do. No matter, and I think no matter how long you've painted, that's true. You're gonna learn new things and uh, figure things out. So it's a process and uh, it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to step back and realize, oh, I don't like how that looks and change it. And again, just not feeling like you have to make it identical to a reference photo. We're going to get some uh, darks back in here in just a second. And one thing to keep in mind, too, is when you place a color in one spot or a value in one spot, Try to think about where else you see that value in the painting. I try to um, really try to create balance in my art by uh, repetition of color and value. So I don't want it in just one spot. I want it in multiple places. I'm going to start adding a little bit more detail to that uh, face momentarily. Oh, thanks, Kimberly. Yeah, you should definitely try to paint one. I think, I think animals are really fun to paint. I think you learn a lot. Again, there's lots of problem solving as you're, you know, trying to figure out how you want to, you know, paint fur or create texture. And I think animals work in lots of styles from very realistic to more expressive to more cartoonish, like whatever your style is that you enjoy. I think it can work. Okay, so I was adding a little bit of some darker values, the very dark gray I've got going on here. And again, I'm trying to put it in multiple places that I see it. And then just remember as paint is uh, wet, you can blend it. And acrylic does dry fast, so if you're trying to blend something and you don't get there in time, like it dries too fast, remember you can always uh, just overlap. Just paint right on top. You can build it up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just kind of take a little pause here, and I wanna just kind of visit the face. I think what I can do is just zoom in a little bit so we can see that start to develop. So I just wanna push the face a little bit because it does look a little scary right now. Let some of this dry. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find that color that I really want here and I'm gonna start to block that in and then we'll start to add some details and, uh, and fine tune some things. So the face is pretty small on the, um, the paper I did here. And you know, sometimes actually painting large is a little bit easier. I kind of tend to like these little details though. So I'm just pulling some little round brushes that I have. This is a, a size one, a size zero. Um, so yeah, just little, little tiny brushes. And just so I don't stick my arm in that, uh, or you can't see that, but I'm just moving my, uh, my palette around so I don't dunk my arm in it. And I just... I'm going to play around a little bit with color just for a second. So actually while I do that, just so you can see, I'm going to, this is some cad yellow. 
I'm just, like I said, not quite, I think my orange, orange is just too bright. I'm just, um, I don't know if it's our daylight savings time or what. My brain's just not totally functioning today. So I, uh, yeah, I just want to play with the color a little bit here because I want to get something uh, that I like for, for the fawn here. I think that that little coloring is important and I want to again not that I need to match the photo exactly that's not my goal but I want to get a color I like so this is cad yellow deep which is like a warm yellow and then I pulled just a little bit of that burnt sienna in or sorry yellow ochre and then here's a little burnt sienna so I'm just going to bring that to the side here just had to think a little bit here about my color, my color and how I wanted to, to get this. So that's feeling a little bit more of uh, like what I wanted. Now, one way to darken this too is, yes, I can, I'll just show you. Okay, I can bring some brown into it. That is true. I can start to head to this direction. Um, the other thing you could do is actually take a little bit of blue. Okay, I got a phthalo blue. I haven't opened this one yet. I'm going to open it real quick. So you could also do like an ultramarine, depending on what kind of, uh, what colors you have in your paint set. But I'm just going to put a little bit off to the side there. It's not important that you see that, but I'm going to bring some over because orange and blue are complements. So because this kind of almost takes on an orangey feel, this is uh, way too much blue that I've mixed in there. I can also darken uh, with a blue. And this sometimes can be uh, really good for, you know, those little bit darker areas, um, some of these areas that we're seeing too. So uh, yeah, I feel a little bit good, I feel a little bit better about these um, color schemes here. So. Um, I'm just going to push that to the side then and bring this back and we're going to take a look at the face here. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually put the eye in there and that eye is just like a nice solid ivory black. We don't have to worry about mixing that. So I'm just pulling some ivory black with that little brush there and I'm just going to go ahead and start to fill that in. And it's mostly just going to be solid black for now. And then I'll come back and put in a little bit of a highlight. And there is a part where it kind of splits up here. It's almost like, I feel like the, um, the little fawn has some really nice uh, eyelashes. So kind of kick them out to the side there a little bit. And then fill this in. We do see a little bit, the eyes are so large, which makes them really cute. It's like big eyes on animals are so cute. There is a little edge of the face, the skin here, that will, the fur, <laughs> well, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. We see a little edge of the fawn's face there. So we'll go ahead and put that in in just a minute too. Fill this one in. Same thing, we see a little bit of an eyelash. Now, when I paint the background, you know, I'll either have to be very cautious around that or, you know, perhaps paint it back in, depending on what happens. And again, the eyes aren't super detailed. You know, they are very dark, but we see a little bit of a highlight. So I just want to fill those in and then while that's drying, I don't want to put the highlight in yet because I don't want it to blend all together. So while that's drying, what I'm going to do is block in uh, kind of like the nostrils, which are the darkest part that come down. And I can hardly see my little sketch. I, I am kind of making this up a little bit. They kind of come down and then they go into that little. So 
like almost like a little black shape kind of here. See that come in, and then this is where I see like a little bit of a more gray value. There is a little bit more black and some some white. I'm going to add a bit. This is one of those instances I kind of have to look, imagine what's underneath a little bit, and then we'll kind of build up some layers. So this I am painting relatively solid for the time being, but we'll be layering some little texture on top of that. And then um, as I'm kind of filling in this too, what I notice is a little bit darker kind of on the side so I want to not totally black but it's a little bit darker I'm going to put some lighter value in there in just a minute too again like I said you, you know there's layering here you can't do it all in one little brush stroke or one swipe of paint it's it's layering it's building and sometimes you know you don't always get things how you want them so you might have to work it or, you know, repaint something. That's okay. I always say recognizing something that you don't like in your art or something that you want to fix, like, that's a, that's okay. That's a good thing. You know, it shows growth and it shows you want to make it how you want it. So I think that's good. So again, some of this uh, will be a little bit more layered uh, momentarily. So what I'm going to do is just bring a little bit of white. I want to just kind of capture that little shape underneath. And you kind of see his little mouth in there too. So a little bit of white in the face, just kind of uh, building that up more. And not that I have to get everything exact, but you know, you want to get enough of it to get the gist, enough information. You now showcase what it is. So bring the little edge of the face in there. And sometimes the feeling of painting like an animal's face like this where they're looking straight at you, but, you know, it's coming forward, that's challenging. So, we, you know, we really need these lights and darks to help see um, the sense of, or help develop a sense of space. So again, I'll be going back to some darks momentarily. Again, it's a little bit of back and forth. Like generally I paint light to dark, but then also I'll change things. And again, like I said, I'm a chaotic painter. So I'll, I'll go all different places. Just uh, filling in some of this lighter value around the ear. Helps create some definition so I can just see a little bit better. And you see a little bit of a lighter can just fill in this in and we'll get those darks in there in a minute too. And same thing over here, just popping in some of these lights a minute. So 
just to get some of the definition in. Okay, and then I want to see just a little bit of a gray kind of coming down through here. And I'm just very lightly kind of tapping it in, just keeping it super faint. I don't want like a really harsh brush stroke or line here. just want it really soft. And then I'm, this is just a darker gray that I'm using. Just kind of bring it down further. And then kind of gradually just darkening, darkening it as I bring it down. Again, there's some little highlights in there that I'll kind of come back for. And just, you know, even though my goal isn't to make it exactly like the reference, this kind of information comes from observing the reference. So I do spend time, it's on the screen there, but I have it right in front of me too on my iPad here. And I just, you know, I really look at the shapes and the lines to, so I can start to create, uh, you know, these definitions and, you know, making it look like what I'm seeing or enough of what I'm seeing, you know, like many painters are using references that, you know, they're putting their own spin on things. Or, you know, sometimes people view it as like capturing the essence of something. So I've got a little bit of a darker value now. So I'm starting to bring that in with the lighter values. And this is, I'm doing kind of this uh, darker, I'll just kind of show you my palette really quick since I'm zoomed in. I've got this, that color that I mixed here, I'm kind of mixing it with a little black. So kind of a dark brown and black combination. And I want to see some of this uh, little texture in the face. And I just, I don't have a ton of paint on my brush. I'm just kind of, I, was, I don't want it to be too dominant. And I am going to bring a little bit of a, uh, lighter value into this while it's wet and I'll be bringing some more white in too to kind of come into some of these areas and, and create some balance. So I've just washed off my brush again drying it off really good trying to make sure I don't have a ton of water going to mix in with my paint and then now I've got some white again and I'm just going to come back and start to to fill in. So it really is some going back and forth sometimes. And two, again, everybody paints different. You're going to find what works for you. And it doesn't have to be the exact same as what I do or what anyone else does. So just starting to again fill this in, looking for areas where it's light. And observing. And then there is just the teeniest, tiniest little swipe of white up here. Actually made it way too thick, so I might fix that. Thin it out over here. And we see a little bit of a highlight in this eye. And a little bit of one over here. I'm kind of making them a little bit bigger than what they actually are. Might uh, make them a little smaller. Got a little bit of black on my brush. And then what I do is just kind of come back and a little, a little bit of back and forth. And then I'm also, uh, again, going to get that kind of nice little orangey brown up there too, or reddish brown in just a minute. Got a little bit more white, a couple things I want to do with the white here first. So 
little inner number here. I have some dark to continue to add to. And then like on top of this dark, I'm adding just a little burnt umber. Again, just very, very light, just kind of not much paint on my brush and just gently kind of tapping it in. This is called scumbling, by the way, and I'm just gently kind of bringing some down into the neck here, too. And this is helping me create that very light kind of fur texture. And then just with a little bit of the burnt umber and black get a little bit more of where it's the shadow a little bit darker through here I filled that in a little bit more than I wanted to so I'll go back in with a little bit of white too again it's a little a little going back and forth especially to just uh, build up this kind of texture And sometimes if you are doing it again on that wet on wet, you'll get a little bit of a blend. And I'm gonna bring a little bit more of highlights in there too, so. Let's get a little bit of the dark over here. Just uh, wanna finish up a little bit on the ear before I move on. And, you know, paintings are going to take different amounts of time. Um, it's not that I sit down and I'm like, oh, you know, this is an hour long painting. or This is a two hour long painting. You know, I don't really know uh, until I start painting about how much time it will take. So usually in our lives, I, I've been spending just over an hour and you know, with the intention that, hey, you know, maybe I'll, I'll continue to develop this a little bit. So that's kind of my approach with painting that, uh, you know, you just kind of let it happen and don't worry about the, the time. And then I do see, you know, some darker areas in here. So very lightly, I don't have a bunch of paint on my brush, just very lightly bring in some, with some scumbling, just some of that shadowed area. Again, that dark area pulls back. So those ears start to look like they have a little dimension to them. And this is where I want a little bit of that uh, light pink. Just for some of that, the inside of the ear. Yeah, I always say, you know, paintings go through, I don't know if you want to say it like this, but like the ugly phase or the in-between phase and it's just because it's not finished and, you know, we need to uh, develop it. Uh, it can't always look amazing all the time. So, you know, I challenge you to just push through paintings if you feel like you're not enjoying it or you don't like what it looks like. Well, I should say, hopefully you're enjoying it. But, you know, I know it's frustrating when it's not turning out how you want it to. So just, you know, keep at it. And the more you paint, I think the easier it gets and you kind of understand what goes into something. Okay, right, I'm gonna lighten up just a little bit right here. Get underneath the neck, just a little lighter. Now you can do some like scratching 
Scraffito 2, which is where you take the back of your paintbrush and you etch, basically. And once you have something layered, sometimes that's kind of fun. It kind of pops through and you can see a little bit of texture. So, you know, not something you have to do, but it can be kind of nice. All right, so I am going to come back up to the face uh, momentarily. Not totally done, but I am going to start to pull back just a little bit. Zoom out just a little bit. And uh, kind of start to fill in a little bit of the, the white. Again, I like to just kind of move my brush. I like uh, fun expressive strokes. I'm looking for uh, some areas of light where I can start to pop this, this value in that I have currently. And since acrylic paint dries quick, I like to pop in those values where I see them. Okay, so now what I want to do, um, my kind of sample color that I made dried up a little bit so I'm gonna have to revisit that and again what I did was do uh, put down some cad yellow so I'm just gonna put that right on top there some cad yellow and some yellow ochre and I'm just gonna mix that up I think I'm trying to remember if I put in a little other crimson yeah, actually, I do kind of like that. A little bit of that crimson. Kind of that, sometimes I like to have like different little pools of paint too. You know, some different kind of values, slightly different colors. i do a little bit of brown next to that. That's more, that's more of what I want. A little bit warmer. So I'm just going to start to pop that in here. There we go. And again, I can have some different variations of that. Some light versions and dark versions of that. Maybe a little come up here. I need to be a little careful. I have a lot of paint on my brush. There we go. I see that pull up just a bit. I see a little bit of that value up here on his head. And, you know, I might take a little bit of white and tap a little bit of white into the edge there just to kind of soften that transition. It's a little bit lighter. And then I'm just dabbing my brush off so I don't have so much paint on it. I'm just kind of lightly pulling it through. There we go. That was the color I wanted. I that little... A little warmer. And then just uh, continuing kind of that same process of going around and kind of blocking in. You know, we'll get those little spots in there too, coming back for those. I'm just sort of imagining the spots aren't there. Adding a little white to that. We have some different values of it. It's not one flat color there. So I want to see a little bit of a shift in my tone. Again, that wet on wet allows me to kind of blend, pull some colors together. Whereas if I let things dry, I can layer, cover things up. So all those uh, little colors I kind of blocked in with, again, just help create a little bit of variation for me, which I like. I don't like it to be flat in one color. 
I want to see, you know, some expression in it. I'm just gonna size down my brush just a little bit. This is a size six. Just need a little bit of water to soften the bristles up. We'll talk about that background too in just a minute. And I think I'll probably keep it relatively simple. I'll have to figure out how to uh, get some music playing while I while I live stream. Because, um, you know, obviously I talk through it, but I think there's some moments where I know I go kind of quiet and maybe a little background music would be nice. <laughs> Just bring in, again, a little bit lighter value. I see a little bit of variation. And also think about the direction of my stroke. My brush stroke. So I want to I want to complement the form of the the fawn. So when things kind of appear rounded or curved, I I want to mimic that. Let's clean it off my brush a minute. And then uh, in the back there, there is a technique, it's called glazing, where like if I made a gray, it would make this feel very solid, which I did put a little gray in there. But another way you can get around that without it feeling so solid is through glazing. And so what you do is the fur is white. It's just, and it's, there's just a shadow cast on it. So it appears darker. So what I'm gonna do is actually paint it white and we'll let it dry and then I'll glaze black over top of it so it'll push it back. Now there is, this is like gloss glazing liquid and then I also have um, glazing medium. So these work really well um, and you won't have to worry about the binder of your paint breaking down by adding water to it, but you can use some water to glaze as well. So, you know, just an option. I know not everyone has glazing medium on hand, but if you are getting into acrylic painting and plan on sticking with it, I highly recommend getting yourself some. It's worth it. It's a great medium for kind of translucent effects. I kind of describe it as like the effect of having sunglasses. Like you can see the color still, but there's like a filter over top of it now. So same idea, this is white, but you know, there's a dark filter because of that uh, cast shadow. So that's what that is all about. So I'll revisit that in a minute. I just need that to dry. While that's drying, I'm just grabbing some white. I'm just uh, coming back and revisiting this area a little bit. I'm gonna revisit that shadow too. But yeah, just kind of continuing to build up some texture, adjust a little bit. We'll get to the, uh, the spots momentarily too. And then a background. There's just a few areas to, to fill in. Yeah, it's definitely a different process to paint and talk at the same time. Like a full painting, you know? So there's definitely times where I'll go quiet or forget my thought because, you know, painting is a right brain activity, speech is a left brain activity. So sometimes doing both at the same time can 
can be challenging. So, so forgive me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what I'm doing now is like, if you look in this area, I want to define this just a little bit more uh, what, with what's happening uh, with the fur. So I'm just filling in some brush strokes to, to help with that definition there a little bit. And uh, if y'all have ideas on what you'd like me to paint next, feel free to leave it in the chat. Let me know. Doing some lollipops next week. And I thought I'd use some gouache next week. I thought, hey, you know, maybe we'll change it up. Gouache and acrylics. Do a little bit of both. Uh, but what I'll say is uh, you, know, you could always use whatever kind of paint you wanted. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I think, is just go ahead and uh, add some spots. This is pretty much uh, dry enough for me to start to add some spots. But actually, really quick before I do add some spots, I want to add just a little bit of a couple little darker areas in there for a minute. Just kind of right through here. And again, this is just a little burnt umber with a little bit of black in it. And I'm just, I blot my brush off so I don't have too much on there. I'm going to bring a little bit down here. I'm going to still glaze that in, but I'm just bringing just a little bit through here. And again, we need these darker values. They help pull back. We, we need both. They work together. Light and dark help create this sense of space. And that's too why I often go back and forth. It's like I don't just start with one and then... I'm done with it. It's like we go back and forth to really push and develop this. And then I see some more through here too that I kind of missed. And again, every deer is going to be a little different or every fawn a little different. So it's not, again, you know, I think at this point there's no mistaking that it's a fawn. So if the exact placement of things aren't perfect, totally fine. Okay, so for spots, I think, you know, really just a small little liner brush. This is a zero, size zero brush. And I have some white paint already on here. So what I'm going to start doing is just on the left-hand side, just kind of lo loosely looking at the spots that are there. start to pop some in. And as I'm going around, I might also add a little bit more detail, the white where I see it. And I like things layered, and built up. And then we'll get to that background. And this, uh, the spots too, it's not like you have to do as many as you see on the actual reference. I think a suggestion or, you know, similar kind of thing is fine, but you know, it's what, whatever you want to do. A little bit more white down here too. You know, I kind of, let my brush stroke again overlap just a little so we can see a little bit of that fur texture. And spots, you know, sometimes they overlap or there's lighter ones, bigger ones, smaller ones. So that me what that means is you don't have to worry about being totally perfect here. You can just, again, just kind of follow the contour or the form of the the fawn, because that just helps mimic the shape. And you know, as you paint and continue observe, to observe, you're just gonna notice more and more, and 
you know, you might decide, oh, you want to work on your painting more or develop areas more. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard for folks to know when they're done with a painting. And it's okay to, I think, take a break from it and come back and then look at it with fresh eyes. Sometimes when you've been staring at something for a really long time, it, it's hard to know. And look at it from a distance too. You know, when you're painting something, you're so close to it, staring at it up, up close. You're not always seeing it as someone else might. And feel free if you do paintings and ever want feedback, you could post a um, comment and leave me an image or you could uh, email me as well. I'd love to see your art. So if you, you do these, let me know. And again, you know, yours can turn out different than mine. They do not need to look the same. Um, there's so many different styles and approaches when it comes to art. So have fun with that. Explore. Don't be afraid to try things. You never know what's going to happen. And that's how we learn. I'm just uh, bringing in a little bit of water into my black now. And then what I'm going to do is do a little glazing. So I don't, I'm not going to switch brushes. I'm just going to use this little guy. And then what I'll do is kind of underneath here, I'll do a little watered down black. So you can still see that white through it, but now it has that appearance of that cast shadow. So there's areas where I like to glaze, and again, it's just watering the paint down, thinning it out, making it transparent. And I think it's a nice way to get some little shadows in there too. And again, I like shadows because it's going to help create dimension and depth. It's going to help show space, make things look like they're going back. And this is true even if something is like a cartoon or not as realistic. We still like to see depth. So just adding a little bit more to the face and then we'll think about a little background. And I think whatever we do for this uh, background will be relatively simple for today. And there is a little grass, of course, which I didn't talk about, but part of the background. And then I am gonna add just a little, I wanna see a little bit more of that shadow coming through here. And then I just wanna, all this little stuff, honestly, is my favorite. I can, uh, kind of be nitpicky and mess around for a long time with some of these little details. So again, I'm not going to go too crazy today. Bring a little, some of those spots down a little bit. The fun too, I feel like you could do lots of fun, cool backgrounds. Like you could definitely do more of a wooded background. You could do kind of like a snow scene. You could, you know, whatever you wanted to do. So I think that's kind of the gist of the fawn. Now I can nitpick and play around with it and do, you know, lots of other things. But for the sake of time, what I think I'm gonna do is just a relatively simple background. So I'm ignoring the reference. In fact, I think what I'm gonna do is actually get rid of the reference a minute and again i'm just going to pop this one into the high uh to the viewpoint just to sh or camera <laughs> see there i go losing my words uh just to show you the colors again i like kind of these greens with the blue i notice the blue is not totally flat and this is acrylic on wood panel so it does sit a little bit differently but uh kind of get that idea also my uh, palette paper is crazy so I'm going to, sorry about that, I'm just going to grab a new sheet. And uh, so for colors, again, I got this light blue permanent, but you could also do, do some blue and white. You don't need, a, need to have this. And I'm also going to do some white. And then uh, greens, let's see, I've got this pale green. 
And I don't want it so bright. It's really bright. I want to neutralize my green a little bit. So I'm going to put a little red on my palette. I'll show you my palette real quick. So this can be for my grass. This can be for my sky. We're going real simple here. So let's go ahead and do sky first so it can come down. And then my grass can kind of pop on top. So I'm just going to use um, a small flat brush. Let's see if I can find the size. This is a size 8 little flat brush here. I am going to use it to kind of create like a little sky mixture. So we're going rogue. I'm leaving the, uh, the reference behind here. Um, so at any point, if you want to do something different, go for it. So what I'm going to do, just because I've got some of these smaller little areas in between the legs of the deer, I'm going to pop in a little bit of this color first, you know, and I might have to revisit, but I just want to go around. Now, I kind of like going around my subject and filling in the background. I don't know. There's something about it. I just kind of like it. Again, some folks like to paint their backgrounds first. Sometimes I do. Again, everything's different. There is not like one perfect recipe to follow. And I am allowing the blue to go down, just overlapping where that grass will be. Because again, I'm going to have that grass kind of pop up. But I feel, I like this uh, blue with the color of the fawn. I feel like it kind of complements nicely. You could do a little bit of a darker sky. You could do a more of a, like an ombre where you're fading. Okay. This is where, in between these little areas, by the way, this is where you want to be careful how much paint you have on your brush. Just being aware of that might seem, you know, like a simple thing, but it's easy to overload your brush and then, you know, overlap something that you didn't mean to. And this paint is on there a little thinner, so I could thicken it up if I want with a second coat. Or maybe I like the idea that I can see pokes of that yellow ochre coming through. You know, it's up to me. So I'm going to continue with this small flat for just a couple more minutes here as I uh, just cut in around the fawn. And then I'll uh, use a bigger brush to kind of quickly put the rest in there. We're getting close. And I do just uh, try to even that out a little bit. I don't want my background to be super textured because I just kind of want it to fall, fall to the background. I don't want it to be a focal point. I also find it helpful to rotate the painting sometimes too to get into edges or to cut around, cut in, I should say, because sometimes, it's like otherwise you're moving, trying to put your hand in a weird position and it's easier to move the actual painting unless you're working on an easel. Even then you can rotate it. Again, just kind of cutting in, letting that go down into the grass. That's okay. Just kind of flattening that out, getting the excess paint off my brush. And then I'm just going to come up here. We're getting real close. A little, a little on the edge there. Again, you can always go touch things up as much as you need to. Okay, and then what I'm going to do from here is just grab a little bit bigger of a flat brush. Um, and then I'm going to just grab a lot more of that color. And then just kind of quickly fill in the rest. 
And I'm just kind of moving my brush in different directions to not pick up like a lot of directional brush strokes. Like it's all horizontal, it's all vertical. I just want it to be kind of soft. So I like to just kind of mix my, mix up my brush strokes. Just kind of overlap and then rework edges and it just kind of creates this little bit softer look. And again, I can see some of that yellow ochre popping through. I kind of like it, um, but you know, if I didn't want that, all I would need to do is just do another coat. And again, the sky's not flat blue. Well, sometimes it is actually. Uh, but what I should say is the sky is different all the time. So you have lots of options if you would rather you know, have a, like I said, like a darker sky, lighter sky transition. It's not like your blue has to be all one blue. Almost done. And again, I could definitely do another coat if I wanted to. But I think that looks nice uh, with that the light blue. And if I want to get a little closer, get in there again, fill in a little area, I can do that. All right, then gonna reuse I think let's see that smaller flat brush I have just clean that off a minute and we'll get some little bit of grass in there nothing crazy and we'll be done okay so again for grass I'm gonna pull some green and put just a bit of red into it. I just want to mute it down a little bit. A lot of red. There we go. And then I actually might use a little bit of my uh, white. Sometimes I don't always like to use white to lighten uh, green because it makes it more pastel. Sometimes I like a, a yellow because it uh, brightens and lightens. So just kind of depends. But I'm keeping this relatively simple. So with this little flat brush, I'm just going to, from the bottom, here, Let's see if I can do it this way, just to kind of show you. I'm just uh, pulling from the bottom and pulling upward. I'm just kind of letting there be a softness. And in fact, the uh, blue paint is still a little damp, which is kind of nice because it's just creating, the edge isn't like super harsh. I mean, there's, there's an edge, but it's not uh, super duper crisp, which I like. You could also try pulling down if you'd rather. You know, I got the tape, so it has something to run into. But uh, covering the hooves up a little bit of the, the fawn. This kind of reminds me of, like, I don't know how to draw hands on a person, so I'm just going to put them in their pocket instead. You know, we're behind their back. <laughs> we're covering the hooves. So if you'd ra rather paint hooves, you could have a shorter grass if you'd rather. So let's see. Just kind of keep pulling that up. Let's get a little texture there. And then what I'm going to do is just grab a little bit of white and mix that in. And with that same brush, I'm just going to do a little pulling up with some of this a little bit lighter green. And I'm not pulling it up as far. And I don't have a ton of that color on my paintbrush. I reload occasionally, but I'm just keeping it very, very soft. Nothing crazy here. Now if I want, you know, some little, for example, like I did in this one, I have some like little pieces kind of coming up. The grass is longer. So I could do like a thin round brush and or a thin liner brush and pull pull some more if I wanted. But like I said, I'm not looking to do that. I want to keep this just super simple. 
I'm just grabbing a little, little darker, do a little overlap. You can just kind of, you know, get that, get that how you like it. Now, if there's some, some edge you don't like as much, you can always bring a little bit more uh, blue into it if you want. Or just to kind of show you, maybe I do have like a few little grasses. It doesn't have to be a ton. But just to kind of mimic that, you know, it's more of a field versus like a well cup lawn or something. So I'm just pulling out just a few little. I like just a little bit of water on my brush for something like this. Just uh, tends to make it a little bit more um, fluid and I get a little bit of a thinner line. And I don't like to have a ton of paint on my brush either because I want it to be a little bit softer. And you know, I just try to have some different kind of thicknesses and widths and lengths and kind of go from there. So I think that's good. For now, like I said, I might, you know, look at it later and want to add some more. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and just uh, remove the tape, just so you can see the edges. I know I, ooh, I know I painted some stuff over there, so just ignore that. Kind of just let that wrap around a little bit. Then from here I can trim it or frame it. See, I got a little, I got a little bit of my wash on the edge too, but uh, that's okay. Let's see. <laughs> okay, maybe note to self: don't wrap it around the edge quite like that. This one doesn't want to come off. There we go. There we go, there we go. Okay, so yeah, ignore that, but now we got a little clean edge. Um, yeah, little fawn painting. And again, there is there is a little more, I, I'm looking at this already and I'm like, oh, I could add this, this, and this, or I could fine tune this area. So, I mean, that just comes with it, making art, but I feel like, you know, you got the gist of it. So keep playing and, and adding more detail. Uh, pull it back, look at it from a distance, uh, take a break from it and come and look back and, you know, you can decide if you're finished. So thanks so much for being here with me today. Um, it was definitely fun and we got to work through some, some challenges with some color mixing and all of that to, to get what I wanted. So as always, let me know if you have questions, even if you're watching the recording, let me know if you have questions and uh, I'll see you next week.